This is the aggregate module of the UDOT Inspector Qualification Program. Before heading into the field, the inspector must make sure he has all the tools necessary to complete the testing and inspection. This includes a string line, a tape measure, a sampling shovel, a sampling container, a sledgehammer, a number four sieve, a nuclear density gauge with plate and rod, a random number generator, and a measuring reel. When arriving at the job site, choose a parking location that is close to the placement but does not interfere with the contractor's trucks, equipment, and aggregate placement activities. Be especially cautious of vehicles traveling in the reverse direction. It is a good practice to first communicate with the crew foreman or operator to understand their practices. Sampling is based on AASHTO T2. Sampling frequencies for aggregates vary based on material type and location. Review the associated specification for determining the correct number of samples to be taken. Determine random locations using a computer, calculator, or other random generator device. Samples are to be taken in three equal increments, spread out over a localized area. Remove the material full depth and be careful to avoid including the underlying layer. Place the material from all three increments into a bucket or container for delivery to the testing lab. Windrow sampling is also acceptable, however each increment must be the full width of the windrow and can lead to extremely large sample sizes. Stockpiles sampled on the grade also require three increments and the increments must come from the top, middle and bottom portions. Testing frequencies also vary for aggregates based on material type and location. Review the associated specification for determining the correct number of tests. Determine random locations using a computer, calculator, or other random generator device. When using a nuclear density gauge, always follow proper safety and operation instructions. Selected test sites should be relatively smooth and flat and meet the following conditions. At least 30 feet away from other sources of radioactivity, at least 10 feet away from large objects, and the site should be at least 6 inches away from any vertical projection unless the gauge is corrected for trench wall effect. When preparing to test for density, make sure the test location is flat and that any surface voids are filled with fine aggregate. Use the number four sieve to remove larger rocks when adding fines to the surface. Limit the depth of fines to approximately one eighth inch or three millimeters.
place the guide plate on the ground at the sampling location. While standing on the plate, place the removal tool over the guide and drive the pin at least two inches deeper than the test depth. Test depth is determined by the depth of material being tested and the depth limitations of the gauge. While still standing on the plate, use the removal tool to rotate and remove the pin. Using the footprint of the plate as a guide, place the nuclear density gauge in the same location as the plate and insert the rod into the hole by pulling the trigger and pushing down. Do not extend the rod prior to placing the gauge on the ground and then place in the hole. Enter the appropriate proctor into the machine and run the density test using two one minute tests with the second test rotated either 90 or 180 degrees from the first test. Return the rod to the safe position in the gauge. Record the wet density, dry density, and moisture content for each one minute test. If the wet densities are more than three pounds per cubic foot different, move to another location and retest. If not, average your results and record. If you are finished testing at this location, remember to properly place your gauge back in its protective case, including the locks. There are times when the inspector will need to verify surface profiles prior to allowing placement of additional materials on top. String lining is a quick and easy way to verify the profile of the grade. Using survey hubs, lath, or other set height objects, establish a string line that is equal in height above both sides of the grade. Using a tape measure, measure the depth to grade from the string line every couple of feet, making note of any areas that are too high or too low based on allowed tolerances in the specifications. Repeat this effort every 50 to 100 feet. Mark the out-of-specification areas on the grade using marking paint. 